Hello, this is a mic check and test. This mic is a bit farther away than before, so let me see if I can move it just a tiny bit closer. Hello, Curry. Just realized this. Okay. Maybe? Maybe. Okay, maybe not. There we go. Should be good. Hopefully it doesn't fall over during streams. Yeah, the mic just like almost fell over. <laughs> Sounds okay. Okay, good. Um, let me transition over. Hello, those of you just getting in. Okay, that looks pretty good. My little uh, bouncing Momo is working. It was having some slight technical difficulties earlier with Spotify and I couldn't hear it through my headphones. So, um, don't know if we'll encounter that same issue or something else, but if at any point you guys can't hear any music or anything, let me know. Hello Rebel Star, how are you today? Tonight? Okay, stream looks good on here, although a little bit blurry. Let's see. Oh, there we go. A little bit more focus. That works. Also realized that um, I've been commenting a lot on how yellow everything looks, <laughs> or like red, and I was messing around with the computer settings, um, and I didn't realize that I hadn't set it back to like cool mode, <laughs> and so uh, hopefully now I can comment a little better now that my screen is more uh, bluish toned rather than red toned. So that's something important guys, with uh, color monitors and other things is to try to get one that's uh, closest to daylight color, or at least more, I guess, cool toned. At least in my case, I prefer cool toned uh, because otherwise it's going to be harder to edit your photos and get them however you want, and stream wise too. Rebel Star asks, You're good, thank you. Hope you are well. I am well. How is being back at uni? Ah, yeah, let's talk about that <laughs> before we get started today. Um, so today was my orientation day for my school, meaning, um, you know, you go through the standard, hey, welcome back, here's what you expect, blah, blah, blah. And then after that was kind of a meetup with my department. So the, the area that I'm focusing in for my master's degree. And it was good. I'm pretty tired today, so, because of everything that happened. So I'm not sure how far we'll get in terms of stream stuff. Um, but we're definitely going to try to do like all the metallics today and get that masked off. So that's why I kind of have the masking stuff here. Um, but yeah, it went really well. I'm really excited for my program. Um, I think being there and like physically in person one, like I've been doing virtual orientations and stuff and it was like, oh, okay, this is starting. But there's something about, you know, being on campus and seeing people walk around and seeing professors in person, that was a really interesting shift from what I've you know, been doing in the past. Cause I'm not, I didn't just come out of undergrad, I've been working for a while. And so going back into the field um, and a field that I do want to study, uh, I think will be really interesting. So I'm quite excited to see how it goes. This was, this week was just orientation, but next week is the official week that school starts. So next Monday, um, you know, is my, the beginning of my classes and those will be on Monday and Wednesday so uh, kind of why we shifted our streams to Tuesday Thursday and I think Tuesday streams will be okay we'll have to play it by ear Wednesday is my my super busy day basically classes all day um, and so I'm a little bit concerned that Tuesday nights um, streaming might be a little tough if I in case I need to wrap anything up last minute I'm usually really good about planning stuff in advance, but we'll see how it goes. But for now, we're going to try the Tuesday, Thursday streams like we have been doing for, you know, a week now and see how it goes. But anyway, so that's my life. <laughs> Back to school, painting, interesting. Um, let me get a drink real quick. 
But yeah, so tonight I am a little bit tired. Uh, we're gonna try to do some work on this. There's a couple things we have to do, but we're honestly pretty far along in this kit. So last time we wrapped up the pants, which I don't have right now. I set them in a place where they're safe so they won't be scratched or anything. Um, and then we worked on the skin tone. And so we used a variety of clear paints. Uh, we did some shading on them. I did go ahead and seal those paints and I did a little bit more work on them as well, on the, the figure. And so she was really kind of, I know I wanted this kit to be orange toned before, but um, I did change things a little bit and added a couple more clear colors to it and then sealed it up. So she has a slightlier peachy tone now, but still, you know, pretty much what we did before. I'm gonna try to, there we go, get it back here for now. Also, it's a very white background, so that's not helping this. If I had like a neutral gray or something to put it up against, then maybe. Or we could just do green, see how that looks. That doesn't help very much, but also my screen's pretty bright, so. Yeah, so I think it looks okay for now, but the the big thing um, and kind of what's going to determine if I like this skin tone or not is once we get this metallic blue on. Here's the face, so, you know, not too much different from what we did last time. I just added a bit more shading. Um, I have been finding that I tend to kind of go light on the shading a lot of times and light on the skin tone, and so this is, you know, more of a practice kit for myself as well, so... I decided to go a little bit heavier with the shadings. You know, you can see her eyes are a little bit darker than, uh, you know, they were before. And I felt like once we mat this down, she'll probably lighten up in, you know, her skin tone as well. So I do want her to have that, uh, you know, healthy skin look. So doing this, I think, will help it a lot. But it's pretty cute so far. Um, it does match with the pants so far, so we'll see. Um, but in any case, yeah, that's where we're at now. And so today, what we're going to be working on um, is we need to mask off her skin. So this should be a pretty easy paint job or easy masking and paint job because really it's just, it's a straight line. You know, you can see her clothing here. We're just going to mask off the skin along the top here. There's a little bit of a triangle right here we're going to mask off. But then after that, we'll just, you know, cover the rest of the skin and we can spray this part blue. But... We're not gonna spray this piece first. We're gonna spray the other piece, which is this, you know, big, her big uh, torn clothing piece. Because if I'm not happy with how the blue looks against this clothing, I don't wanna, you know, spray this with metallic and then not like the paint job. And so we will be ma doing masking first, then spraying this. And then if I like the blue, we'll go back and spray this piece, uh, metallic blue. And then after that, uh, will be the hair step. So she does have a lot of hair. She has these twin tails as well as a, you know, a little front piece that has to be painted. And her head also has a bunch of hair. And so part of why we painted the skin first is because we will have to go ahead. Let me get this focus first. Also, I think music just stopped. Oh, okay. Yep. There we go. Okay, so let's get this focus. So yeah, we painted the skin first because we need to paint the hair next. And so um, by doing the skin, we're able to mask off all of that skin tone kind of along her hairline. And then we'll go in and cover the face and get the rest of the hair painted. I don't honestly foresee us painting the hair today on Tuesday uh, because this will take a lot of time. Notice how each of these is like a little, you know, triangle and we will have to cut masking tape that appropriate size and, you know, make sure it fits well and all of that. And so, um, you know, we can't cut the tape that small. I would not use liquid mask on an area this fine uh, just because I want to make sure that we're getting really, these really sharp angles and, you know, being able to spray and and get that all done in a clean way. And so that's gonna take a while under her neck as well. She's got, you know, pretty much her whole hairline that needs to be masked off. So we'll get to that later. I am anticipating probably starting that, not sure how far we'll get. So 
In any case, let's get started. We're gonna do some masking inside of uh, this booth first, and then, um, you know, paint after that, which is why we're still in this kind of setup here. So hopefully you guys will be able to see me and this is a good angle. Uh, we will also, in you know, terms of lots of stuff going on, <laughs> be upgrading this setup uh, probably for Thursday. So I'm, I've hopefully, you know, I've been doing these streams long enough now that um, I want to invest, well, <laughs> but we want better equipment for this so you guys can see these streams a little better. Cause I know that sometimes when I'm airbrushing, you know, my hand gets in the way cause I'm left-handed or yada yada. And so uh, we'll see how the stream will look on Thursday, but expect it to be a little bit different in a good way. Oh, hello, Jelly. <laughs> hello, baby. How are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you so much for the subscription. Again. <laughs> we are just about to mask, so if you want to see some masking, it's time for you. <laughs> anyway, so we're just going to do some masking. Um, should be, you know, really easy, honestly. It's just a straight line. Um, typically, when I mask, I just kind of stick the piece to my hand once or twice to get rid of some of the stickiness. I also, here's my scissors. Some people stick it to, you know, a mat or whatever, but I find it's a little easier to peel off with my hand because sometimes when you pull it off the mat, like it's kind of hard. I have to scratch it with my nail or something. And so you lose more tape that way. At least that's just what I've found. So I, then I snip off both ends. Sorry if you guys aren't seeing it. Um, just because I don't really want to be masking with the tapered end. You can, but it's just something I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jelly's here. It's time to party. It's fun times. Okay, so don't really need too uh, much of a length here either, but to be safe, I'm probably gonna cut this around one millimeter. So I am using a Hasegawa cutting tool. This is cutting template A, aka TP5. You can see it down here. Um, wow, that's shiny. So yeah, TP5 cutting template A. It just cuts a whole bunch of straight lines. So if you don't want to buy tape that's specifically the diameter that you need, you can use this to cut uh, specific, you know, lengths and widths. So uh, I will be using the one millimeter here and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Let's see. Sometimes I have to flip it over and double check though. And then you pretty much just stick it on here and then slice it with an exacto. I'm gonna move this for now so I don't do anything. And I have a very little cutting board here. I, I usually don't need a lot and so um, I just kind of stick it on here and lets me cut it real quick. This is really <laughs> not gonna be great. It's the left-handed problem. Okay. I also might need to switch out my X-Acto knife because I did notice it was getting a little bit dull. Nope, we're pretty much good. So, and you end up with a tape. Very thin. Pretty easy. And actually, I do need to go grab some fine tweezers. So I will be right back real quick. I will leave this on, just gonna go grab it. All right, so I had to upgrade my tweezers. Uh, the last pair I had got lost. So, I am now using some very fine tweezers. These are super sharp ones. They're like precision-y ones. But, you know, it does the same job as any other one. Let's see. Yeah, these are really helpful. Um, this is one of the best investments that I ever made. And I say that about very few tools because I have a lot of tools, but um, I used to hate masking. Like masking is one of those things that is just so annoying, but I also didn't want to buy every, you know, diameter of tape under the sun when I could just cut it myself and, and get the exact, you know, angles or lengths that I need. 
Um, this has helped me so much in making masking just a little bit more bearable. <laughs> so um, there are plenty of alternatives, you know, if you don't uh, want to cut, you know, your lengths, they definitely sell, you know, one millimeter and, and smaller now. But for now, I like using this one. There's also curved masking tape you can buy, which let me see if um, I can pull it out real quick. I think I showed this before in the maid kit stream, but um, this is some curve, Tamiya curve masking tape. So I think this one is two millimeter, yeah, about two millimeter, and this one is three. And the benefit of this is that supposedly it works better for um, curves. So you can just kind of pull it and it'll curve and contour to a surface. Uh, but I found that just using like a thin paper one in a very thin diameter and length. Uh, works the same width. I keep saying diameter, but it's width. So yeah, that's pretty much my spiel about that. So, um, just going to mask along the top of her shirt now. I initially typically do a really thin line and then go over that and cover the skin with a thicker line later. And I'll show you what I mean if that's not making any sense. Just because it's a lot easier to manipulate the really thin masking tape compared to the big ones. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Probably not. Just kind of sticking it along the edge here. And you do want to try to get it kind of as close to the area that you're going to be painting as possible, but not cover it up either. Okay, that's pretty good. And I usually don't work with a full strip. I, I apply more than one, so you can see along the top here is where we'll be putting the masking tape. So we'll just continue all along the top there. And you really do want to make sure that your piece is fully sealed or um, and or cleaned well because one of the most common reasons for paint peeling up is because your kit isn't cleaned well or it's the paint isn't sealed completely, so. This is why this piece is so shiny, is I put a, a pretty thick gloss layer on it. So hopefully nothing pulls up. Sometimes this, I've still had, you know, pieces pull up for whatever reason. Sometimes it just happens, but. With enough, enough prep, usually you can get by and not have any issues. Okay. So, all around the top, but we still have to mask off that little triangle inside. So you can see the yellow line runs all along the top of her uh, kind of chest area now. Okay. And I can still, let's see. I need to cut one or two of these. Let's see what might work. It's one of the downsides of um, working on really small kits is that you often have to work with really small tapes and other small things. Let's see, actually, what I like to use is kind of a rounded q-tip or a small toothpick with a fuzz on the end because that way you're not scratching anything. Okay. Oh, magnets. Look at that. Just how it be. Power magnet. Hard too sometimes. 
sometimes with these small tapes to know what side is the sticky side. Okay. A couple times I need to do it more than once. I'll show you guys once I get this all this triangle filled out. I think I need a better Q-tip too, but we'll see. Yeah, let me grab another precision cotton swab. <laughs> that one had a bit of uh, stuff on it. I was trying to salvage it from another area that I did before, but that one's pretty rounded and I'm looking for something more fine like this. Okay. I'm gonna put one more kind of in the center. So I see a lot of people also using um, crepe tape lately and it's kind of like a thinner version and uh, comes in a thinner width as well. I have not had the chance to use crepe tape, however, but if you're looking to do a lot of really fine masking, kind of like this, that's maybe something that you want to look into. Okay, so um, the, all of the top and the triangle is now masked. You can see along the top here. So what we got to do is make sure the rest of this is all covered up um, because, you know, we're going to be spraying metallic blue and that is a very strong color so I don't want it on the skin tone at all. And generally you kind of have two options for this. Um, sometimes I just stick tape all over it so I just tape all the way down. Um, other times I use a combination of tape and saran wrap. So um, what you can do and I guess what I'll do is kind of show both so you guys can see the process. The tape all the way down method is pretty easy because basically you're just, you know, covering all of the skin with tape. But now that you have your one line filled out, that really thin line, you can push the tape over it and that way you know that you'll always have that uh, area masked off, if that makes sense. The details one, like the area closest to where you're going to be painting is always the most important place because you really want a clean paint job along there. But then after that you can just kind of cover everything up. So I'll show you guys right after I lay this one down. So we just kind of lay down tape and so I'm going to do that all along kind of the portion here and then we'll use saran wrap for the rest. After painting skin, do you go straight to mask or did you use a gloss finish before? Definitely top coat before you start the masking process. You can see this piece is like pretty shiny. Um, that's a result of the gloss coat that I put on it. The reason for that is that you're, even once your paint is cured, it's still pretty delicate. And so um, if you're putting like this sticky tape all over it, when you peel it off, it might take the paint with it, even if it's a lacquer. I've had that happen. Um, and that could be, you know, maybe it wasn't cured all the way, maybe just your surface wasn't, you know, totally prepped, etc. But I have very few uh, problems when I gloss coat and then, uh, you know, do masking. Rather than the other way around, I tend to have more problems. And I'm sure there's except exceptions to this. So if you're, you know, using ultra strong sealers or something or a paint that's, you know, got some industrial level stuff in it, you may not have that problem, but I typically always gloss coat before masking, which is why it also takes me a little bit longer. You have to like account for that extra step. Another popular thing to do when you're masking is to lay all of the tape down and then put a layer of liquid mask on top of it. That way the liquid mask will, you know, cover any areas that you may have missed during masking and also provide another layer of bond for this tape because um, Tamiya tape, I've just noticed, tends to kind of pull up a little bit after time. 
it lays down really flat, but then it kind of over time peels up. And so by laying down that liquid mask, it locks everything into place. That's really, I find that's really only relevant uh, if you are going to be waiting, you know, in between. So if you're going to be masking and then you don't have time to spray right away, then, you know, it's a better option. But for what we're doing tonight, we don't need liquid masks since we're really just laying down this uh, tape and then we're going to be spraying it right away. Yeah, no problem, fries. Here's what it looks like now, guys. So it's getting there. And what we're gonna do is put down um, another layer of tape, kind of moving down, and then saran wrap the rest of this. And that's just a preference. It's not something that's mandatory, but um, I try not to mask over a lot of skin unless, like I try not to apply tape to a lot of skin unless I have to because I just have had so many experiences and times where it's ripped up. <laughs> it's more like me being burned by my own incompetence. Let's see, do I ever use masking putty? Uh, no, not really, actually. I know that it's widely available. I actually did purchase uh, something similar to that. Let me see if it, I can grab it out of my closet just to show you guys real quick. Well, oh my goodness, indecent monk. I'll turn her the other way. Like right at the top, let's see. Uh, here we go. Okay. So it's not so much a putty, but this is marketed as a masking clay. So this is a Mr. Masking Nendo, which means clay. That's where actually Nendoroid gets its term from. It's, you know, clay, because they started out as clay models or sculpted with clay, I should say. Uh, so this is Mr. Masking Clay, and it's basically something that works like exactly the same as, you know, anything else. It's just a, almost like a sticky stuff that you put on to your piece, and then you spray, and then you pull it off after. But I haven't had the chance to experience this, and so I'm not really sure how it works with paint. Let's see. It just says remove as quickly as possible after painting because if the clay is left in place for a long time it may harden and you, you can't remove it. So, Or is anyone else having problems watching the stream? This is that haven't happened to me for a very long time. I'm gonna wait just a bit for that response. Okay, is it uh, bad enough that I need to stop or is it okay for now? It is bad or it's okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm not really seeing too much on my screen. Okay, it could be a Twitch issue maybe. Yeah, cause it's looking super fluid on mine, but okay. We'll continue then and hope that the issue resolves itself. If not, sorry guys. In any case, uh, what was I saying? Masking clay. So yeah, I haven't had the chance to use this masking clay yet. Um, kind of nervous. I'm al I always get nervous when I stop, like, or when I try to use a new product uh, because I'm afraid it'll like mess stuff up. So really this would be a good opportunity to use it is on a kit like this, but not feeling it. I haven't even opened it. I'm just like, I'm not sure. Oh no, you're good Rebel Star. I'm, I'm glad we can address the issue. Uh, hopefully it corrects itself. It's always when we're trying new stuff and maybe it's this blinking Momo's fault too. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. All right. So the last thing, and I guess the second way that I typically mask um, is not so much using tape but applying tape with a combination of saran wrap to it and so what you honestly just do is you know kind of wrap and wrap around the figure or put it directly onto um, the tape and then wrap it around 
but it does like it is a lot of like, stuff like there's a lot of saran wrap and it's kind of hard to cut it exactly and so I typically just kind of apply it at random like this and then wrap it around my figure again trying to make sure you can see some areas may not be totally covered but that's fine and really ideally it's just so you don't like have to mask everything off with tape you know this figure is so small that even one regular size tape kind of is everything but that's the basics behind it this is very useful if you're um painting legs or something and so really all you have to do is uh tape the whole top part of the leg and then the rest is just saran wrap and that way you don't you save a lot of time because you're not applying tons and tons of tape to try to cover the legs and it also protects the paint job so generally it's like you know i'll just wrap it up or cover it with another piece of tape and that's pretty much it so i'll just do this it's fine really at this point we're just applying tape to the, the saran wrap and that's it that's uh masking needed for the so pretty easy um you know a lot of times you'll get kits though that have like a bikini or something and so uh, it's really handy being able to um, saran wrap and do to the top and then you'll get a really fine paint job again we're not going to liquid mask or anything so that's it for now for this piece uh, so what we're going to do now is transition into spraying the blue metallics and then see how it goes i haven't pulled out the shading color yet either um, so what we're going to be doing is spraying the pieces with Mr. Color 76. This is metallic blue. We're just going to do it straight out of the bottle um, onto a white base. I found that I really like the way that the white looked um, as a base. So the color is a lot brighter and more blue compared to the black, which was a lot duller in tone. Still really pretty and bright, but not exactly the color I wanted for again let's take a look at that image I have not maximized it yet she's got this really blue outfit so we do want to make sure we capture those brilliant blues as best we can I will be using metallic for that um, also note that she does have those gold details as well um, that's something that I'll probably hand paint on or, you know figure out later I haven't decided if I'm gonna mask off the blue on her outfit and give her that kind of old outline or if I'm just gonna freehand it not sure yet I honestly don't know how much use this image is in the top left but at least it's like a good pop of color <laughs> so let me clean up real quick uh, and then I get this booth ready for spraying blue I did already change out my airbrush although I dropped it earlier tonight so there we go so we'll be using the master airbrush um, this pretty generic one off of Amazon that I got for like 30 bucks. It does the job of spraying metallics. So that's the point of it. I don't even use it to spray. I, I just use it for metallics and pearls. Okay, so let's put this away. You don't scratch anything. Get this. And let me get some thinner out. Let me grab a new cup because I'm not sure how used that was. Oh, and I want my uh, safety mask as well it's on the other side of my ring. Just pouring some thinner in a cup right now. So, this is just plain old lacquer thinner. I usually cut this lacquer thinner with the hobby stuff. I'm going to save a little money because I paint a lot. So it's literally, I'll show you the bottle if it will show up. Wow. You can see lacquer. Lacquer thinner. The big jug. Okay. Grab my uh, mask as well. Got that. Because I didn't do any of this before stream, and I should have. Not prepared today. Too tired. Too much schooling. Even though it hasn't even started yet. Alright. 
Should be a decent night for spraying. It's not too humid today and it's relatively cool. All right, let's get this going. Let me grab another cup. This will be our metallic blue cup. Hopefully this cup will zoom in as, let's see. Just wanna make sure that this stream is focused. There we go. Okay, good, ish. This paper towel, I think. It's always the paper towel. Turn it. Good enough, okay. Let me shake this up and get some thinner here. So same as usual, I do kind of two parts of the regular part of the hobby brand. This is Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, so it's what I usually use these days. And I will put just a drop or two tartar in here just in case it does not hurt. Again, this is a um, agent that you can introduce separately into your paint that uh, increases the dry time. So you know, your paint's drying really quickly after you spray it or if it's, you know, messing up. Sometimes adding a bit of retarder helps. We'll do that. And now let's put this metallic in here. Brilliant blue. Lots and lots of blue already that uh, little dropper. So great. I need to do some mixing. Okay. And I'm going to spray a spoon first just to make sure everything's okay. Um, and then after that, we'll transition directly into working on the big piece here. Probably start on the underside just in case. Um, and we'll continue. We will probably also need to run through one or two of these uh, just to make sure the piece is totally covered. So I will be, you know, stopping at some points and refilling that. Let's turn this on. Make sure this first, my airbrush. A lot of like prep involved in just, you know, <laughs> getting ready to paint even, so. All right, let's put this mask on. And I will be muting this stream uh, when I am spraying just because my microphone is even closer to my booth now and it gets pretty loud. So we'll be pretty brief. Enjoy the music while it lasts. Alright, that. Right Let's get this going. Alright. Turn this down.
Okay, and me shut off. Turn off that as well. Um, I'm gonna mix up another batch. Uh, this stuff kind of fills up real quick, and it's getting a little bit grainy. So I was noticing for whatever reason um, that it's like kind of pigmented and, and forming these like weird. I don't know if you guys can see it. Granules. I think I talked about that before, and it's something that can happen with Mr. Hobby paints um, if you're not using a lot of their thinners. So I think in this next batch, I'm just going to use a little bit more of the leveling thinner, and we'll go from there. Let me clean up some of this, though. Thankfully, because this is all one color, and I'm going to be laying it on kind of thick, it's not really too big of a deal. Very blue, though. This whole airbrush booth is going to just clean out some of these granules and then we'll make another batch. Okay. So far so good though. It's a very nice brilliant blue. Exactly the kind of color that I wanted but we will need to be doing some um, shading to it as well. It's not quite the Chun-Li blue that I'm looking for yet. but. We already anticipated that when we sprayed this spoon. So you can see it's a little bit darker in blue here. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you guys can tell. Let me turn this as well. And let's get another batch of this going. So let me use two droppers of the leveling thinner and see if that helps this time. I don't really have this kind of separation issue with Gaia Notes paint, but for whatever reason, Mr. Hobby is kind of like that thank you yeah it's very bright in person um very metallic very bright <laughs> that's all i can say right now definitely a fun color not really something that i typically paint a lot don't really tend to use many metallics in my work so this is a fun little departure from that and something that I kind of wanted to do for a while. I've been better about using pearls, but looks or something else. Okay, yeah, this is looking a lot smoother. Still a little bit grainy, but not quite as bad. So I think it really is a mis, um, you know, hobby issue with being compatible with its own thinner, etc. Okay, but I think this blue is fine. And I'm gonna give it another coat make sure that it has a really really thick coat because you can see some areas here are lighter and others are darker um, and then I'll just switch over to well actually I need to look at this piece first against the skin and then we'll probably just switch right over to um, spraying that top all right yeah sorry enough looking at this and let me see if I can zoom out a little so you guys can see when I'm lifting it kind of up the spray pattern for this nozzle is pretty big, so not always able to angle it the right way for the camera. Just putting my mask back on. All right, let's get started again. Turn this off. Yeah, so shiny so far. All right, muting my phone.
they popped right off. So I was almost done, and then this piece just kind of like fell off. So let me hope that it was dry. Yeah, we're good. So it looks pretty good. It's a bit spotty in certain areas, so I'm just gonna kind of rotate it on the bench or on the uh, mat here and then give it that final coat and then we'll we'll look at it again after that so All right, so that's kind of the budget way <laughs> if you're not on an alligator clip or anything. Um, but you can see it's very shiny. It's reflecting pretty much everything. Let's see. There we go. Nice and shiny blue for now. Exactly what we wanted. But let me look and see how this compares against her skin tone and then we will just switch and spray this very quickly so let me see and actually i need to bring over um her pants as well because we do want to make sure all the pieces work well so give me one second yeah this is a crazy color i really enjoy it too um i almost bought this or worked on this kit for this reason because i wanted to use that metallic blue so <laughs> whoa also camera dropped a little or mic sorry yeah there's every time like my guilty pleasure is just picking up metallics but then i never use them and so um i just really wanted an excuse to use <laughs> a metallic okay so let me make uh this image a little bit bigger Actually, let me just look at it on my phone. And that way I'll have a better idea. Let's see. Where's my reference? There we go. Okay. So, let's see. Pants. Oh, some weird funkiness going on here. So what happens when you get magnets is like stuff just sticks to itself. And I don't even know if this is the right boot, but we're just gonna kind of stick it there. Let's see. Oh, that's a pretty color. Very nice, very blue. Very well with everything though, especially because we did a lot of orange tones in this, so it really contrasts well. Um, it does need it, so I'm trying to angle this in a way. You can see Chun Li's outfit is a little bit darker blue, but it's it's pretty close. I think we could just get away with doing the shadings. Sorry, it's blurry, but you know. But yeah, her outfit has a little bit more purple tones in it, and so um, what we're gonna do is spray a primary purple after this, just a thin coat in some of the crevices, and that should give it enough depth. Um, adding metallics, you know, using metallic paint already, you get a lot of shadows and shading that happens with it because the light is being reflected you know, off of the kit to some degree, um, but we can enhance that even further with the use of, you know, some other paints on top of that. So it will reduce the uh, metallic, you know, a little bit, but ideally if you're working with a clear or similar, it shouldn't do too much. So it's having a trouble focusing on this because it's so shiny. There's a, a good view of it. So yeah, really nice, bright blue. Okay, let me turn this over or at least, you know, make it so it's not all on a blue 
surface and yeah that looks good so far I am just gonna kind of stick it over here for now because we're not dealing with that piece right now we're gonna just finish up and spray this one and then after that we will return um, and I will need to switch my air because we're gonna be spraying some clear color on top of it all right got my, my glove Make sure this is all. Oh, this paint's being wild tonight. And also, for whatever, it's really acting up at the needle area. So you may have seen me do this a couple times. I think I may have thinned this paint a little bit too much, which is why it was coming out so um, freely and also a bit spotty at certain points. Anyway, let's wrap that up. I'm going to turn this booth on just real quick. Won't take very long. All right, that should be good. Uh, let me clean out my airbrush first and then we'll look at the piece. We're not going to peel off that tape yet because we are not done painting the piece completely, but we'll be able to at least check if we got a full coat or not. As always, airbrushing is like, you know, spray for five seconds and spend the next 10 minutes cleaning. kind of shake this around. I'm gonna need to give my booth a very big cleanup after all of this. Blues and neons, like metallics and neons especially, I just feel like the color is so bright and gets everywhere. So far though, I'm liking it. Just needs that purple hint to it, I think, and then it'll be good. And a lot of blue kind of down sitting in this airbrush, so. Let's, move. Let's grab a few more. Q-tips. Blue is also kind of a pain to clean up, I've found, if you're spraying it straight from the bottle. Okay, hmm. don't want to be sitting here cleaning this all night either, but... Okay, that's good for now. I think I'll have to clean this out more later. And we won't be returning to this airbrush tonight, so it's fine. 
basically I'm gonna have to take it apart more because some of this blue is just kind of sitting down in the bottom of this cup. Let's see if it will show it or not. You can kind of see some hints of it just kind of settled there at the bottom. And I do want to make sure all of that's gone, so. Anyway, put this back on. Um, I'll grab my badger. Just debating which airbrush to use for this next part. But I think I'll regret it if I don't use badger. It's a lot of blue. Okay. Set that up, and now let's take a quick look at this. So, very nice and shiny. Let's see if it will focus. Maybe my badger's in the way. Come on, camera. There we go. Wow, yeah, that's blue. That's a very bright blue. Pretty nice on stream though, nice and shiny. This is just how metallics should show up under a gloss base. So you really don't want it to be fading out. It should be, you know, looking pretty shiny without a top coat. And that's a sign of a good metallic. So, so far so good. Yeah, just checking it real quick. So yeah, I am satisfied with this color so far, but it does need some work compared to Chun-Li's outfit. So, let me double check. Yep. Okay, so let me grab my next paint. I think what we tested on a spoon before, yeah, was primary purple. So let me grab that real quick. Primary purple is a Guy Notes color. It is not the same as clear purple, so um, there are two different kind of versions that Guy Notes makes. They make a lot of purple paint, um, but one of them is clear purple. So it's, let's see, 047 is clear purple, um, and it's just a clear color. It's a, a clear purple, you know, like clear red or clear yellow, but purple variety. Um, the other one that they make is primary color violet. Please excuse all the black marks on this. Um, this is 037, so this is primary color violet. Um, I see this as a like super dense pigmented version of clear purple. Um, it does kind of go on clear still, but um, it can also be used to mix with other things or sprayed as is, but it's a very, very strong purple color. And so, um, from the spoon we tested, it looks like, you know, it worked well, but a, a little goes a long way on this. And so uh, we will have to be very careful about how we, how much we apply and how thick it goes on. Let's see. You can see here, kind of the two tones, it might be a little difficult to make out, but this side here has no clear purple or primary purple. And this side here has a, a thin coat of, of primary purple. So. It really just kind of deepens that metallic blue shade. Um, it gives it a little bit more depth, changes the color a little bit, but not, you know, too much. And yeah, definitely comparing it to the metallic here. Um, it's a big step up. But let me see if I can fix this real quick. The issue I'm having here is that I really want to be holding this on a skewer, but for whatever reason, the glue kind of like came loose. Toothpick might work as well. Let's see. Yeah, it's just too top heavy. It's going to be a challenge. And I don't want to touch it too much because it does feel kind of like fragile right now. So, uh, let's see. What else can I use? Can use a thicker. Pin. Let's see if this works. might backfire, might end up scratching this piece, but you know, we're gonna give it a try. I think that's already not sure if that's gonna work. Yeah, 
not very sturdy. Okay, we're gonna hold out on that piece for a little bit and start with the top of the shirt, mostly because I need to figure out a way how to handle that. And let's see, do some maintenance real quick. Why this one did not stick. Okay, put this up. All right, primary purple. That's what we're, or violet. That's what we're working on next. So let's get some of this in a cup. I am going to thin this more than usual because I don't want a thick layer going on. Mm. Alternatively, you can just use not as much paint, so rather than like put one dropper, which is my standard, I'll just put like half a dropper and then spray it and see how it goes. We do have that test spoon we're going to test on first as well. Nice pop. So you can see it's very dark out of the bottle. And I'm running a little low on this, so starting to get concerned. But yeah, even half a dropper is just so pigmented. Put that away for now. All right, let's try on this spoon. Turn on this. And I'm not going to use the um, boot for now. I'm just gonna spray on the spoon here. So you will hear my compressor though. Always double check, even, you know, when you have your colors prepared, it tests the conditions that you're spraying in, it tests to make sure, you know, you're doing what you wanted to do, etc. I do not just spray directly onto the kit before I've had a chance to test. All right. I did put a pretty, pretty thin layer of uh, this blue on here, so. I already kind of see the edges, so I just sprayed along the edge here. Very thin. Just testing the limits of this color. See how it kind of shifts? So the edge of the spoon here, all of that's been sprayed with the purple. Which should be good. I'm gonna compare it to the reference. Oops. The thing about this color too is it goes on so dark so quickly you have to really give it a straight line or else you're gonna end up with the uh, it's shifting. So you can see as you turn it it's got that shading on it. Much darker blue. And let me look at the image. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. So we're gonna go ahead and start spraying, I guess, in that case. And let me add a little bit more to this cup. We're gonna start out with her uh, top, so the this top here. And then we'll figure out what to do about the other piece, so. Going to put my mask on and then booth and mute myself. But we will return uh, after I'm finished spraying this top, so.
All right, and then mute this. Unmute for now. And take another look at this before we switch over. Um, it did indeed do the job. It is pretty purple though, so I think I might uh, go over this with a fluorescent blue. I do have a note here uh, on my paper here that says optional add fluo blue. So, um, you know, adding these purples did take away a little bit from the blueness, but should be okay. Also did get rid of a bit of the metallic shininess, but that's also okay. We can always re-add that with the gloss. So let's see. Ooh, that I want to be careful of. I do not want to drop that airbrush. Okay, so let's take a look. Pretty good. Even though it won't show up really on camera very well at all, um, it is, there is a blue tone or a purple tone added to this. So you can see it along the bottom. Um, I did put it kind of along her back. And if it's subtle, it's meant to be that way. So it really, the purpose of this color is to uh, bring out a little bit more definition, but not really change anything. So you can see her back muscle there is, you know, quite a bit more defined. And that is because of the purple tone, not, you know, the actual sculpt. So really, we're just trying to like emphasize certain areas here. Same with under her busts. Um, you can see the purple tone kind of like is, you know, brought out a little bit more. That's a good angle for it. I can kind of see it pretty well there as long as, you know, her collarbone. All of that is intentional. So we're trying to just define. And up close next to each other. Pretty good. If it will focus on this and not my hand. <laughs> yeah, so far so good. I like this combination. Um, I think that the gold that we add will really help a lot and bring everything kind of together because it does look kind of plain right now. So I'm going to leave that for now. We might go over these pieces with a fluorescent blue, um, you know, after I finish the tattered clothes skirt part here. Um, but we'll just have to see, kind of play it by ear. Thank you. Yeah, it's coming together. Takes, you know, usually how this works is I'm not like happy with it until uh, I reach the end. I'm just like, oh, that worked out. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised that my color choices I spent hours on <laughs> worked together. Oops, something fell off. There's like a pot here. There's a lot of weird stuff on my bench area. Okay, so next up is this, her tattered clothes. This will take a little bit more time because we're really gonna have to like go in between and all around. Um, but I do wanna make sure that I'm able to hold this up so we don't have issues down the line and I don't know if I have a something that will work for that right now hmm. this piece is a little bit drier so that's good too let's try this again my toothpick trick usually this works out for me but Maybe not. Let's see. Nope, that hole is just too shallow. Let's try it over here. Nope, okay. So when I have tough pieces like this, I literally just kind of hold it and work carefully. So that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> for now. And we'll see if it works out or not. Let's see. Yeah, no worries, Rebel Star. Thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it. And probably won't miss much more than this because we're gonna be finishing majority of this tonight and we'll see where that puts us for the face. So thank you for tuning in. All right. So we're just gonna kind of go around this piece and work on it bit by bit. Uh, I'm not gonna hold it up by an alligator clip or anything, just, you know, gonna use my old hand and we'll see how it goes. Same airbrush though, still using the Badger, um, you know, still using primary purple, so hopefully it all works out. <laughs>
Alright, that took a little bit, um, but there is a lot of crevices and stuff involving this piece. So, uh, it is very purple now. I went pretty heavy on the purple shadings, so what we're going to have to do is uh, apply a little bit of a fluo blue, and then I might go over it very lightly with another round of the Mr. Color Metallic, um, just to kind of blend everything in. And let me show you guys in just a moment look at it first I do wonder too I might actually add in a little bit of clear black on this as well kind of playing it by ear at this point just until I'm satisfied with it um, but you can hopefully see some of the hints of purple in here it's a little bit tough uh, given that you know this piece is so shiny anyway so let's but I, I put a lot of emphasis on uh, shading the outside here, so you can, well, it is very difficult to tell. <laughs> Maybe this angle? Yeah, you can kind of see how it's, you know, kind of a different blue here. So, not doesn't look purple on the screen, at least not on mine, um, but it's enough in person where it doesn't, like, fully blend together very well and so we're going to try to do a little bit of blending now. That's pretty typical especially when you're um, working with a not totally clear paint and this is not a totally clear paint. It's a very strong purple so we will yet again be switching out our airbrush tonight this time to my Iwata right after I clean this. and we might return to using this. So for now I will take it off, but. Okay, switch it out to the water and I need to grab my fluo blue. I think that's what really helped it last time. I'm blending in. Good old fluo blue. It is coming together though. I just look at the image and then looked at this piece far away and it is uh, very close. So we're getting there. So I will be using fluo blue very briefly. Uh, this is a guy notes fluorescent color. It glows under UV light. So that's the cool thing about this paint. If you turn it off the light, I think I showed this before but it's, you know, literally a fluorescent. So can be used to add a super bright color to your paints um, or to your paint job. And, or it can be used as like a cool effects part, you know? So if you have like a Gundam eyeball or something that you want to paint and have it glow under UV light, this is, this can do it. Just something fun. Okay. Oh yeah, I already turned on my brush. So let's grab another dropper. Okay, 
little again goes a really long way with this particular paint it will also stain your airbrush so you have to make sure you clean it out really well not so much stain but you'll know if the paint's in there because if you shine the uv light in it you're gonna see it so let me shake this okay It is similar to a clear. It's clear-ish in color, um, but it's very bright. It's a very bright blue compared to the regular clear blue, which is a little bit darker. So I use this when I wanna brighten colors and make them more vibrant rather than like adjust the shade too much. So here's what it looks like out of the bottle. Let's see if I can show. Kind of like a raspberry flavor or blue raspberry flavor or like a kool-aid or something forbidden snack paint oh yeah this i need to clean this too real quick i thought i cleaned this already but it's a little sticky oh yeah a little bit sticky This should be a pretty quick one as well, mostly because we're not gonna, um, I'm just putting a really thin color, thin coat on top of this. I'm not gonna go crazy, but I do wanna test it on the spoon as usual. So I'm just gonna pour all of this in here. And here's the spoon so far for reference. This really won't change much about the color except maybe brighten it a little. Come on, camera. Mm. Spoon. Spoon, camera, come on. Okay, more technical difficulties. It likes the paper towel. <laughs> I just have to move the paper towel. Okay. Put this back on. And as I usually say, uh, 15 to 20 PSI. That's your kind of golden range when painting garage kits. That'll do most of the work for you. So it's always what I said at mine too. All right. And if I like how the fluo goes, again, I'm just gonna give uh, the other pieces a pretty light coat of it. So let's actually test it right now. Should be. Yeah, it's pretty good. Really isn't doing that much. Just brightening it up a little bit. Try that. Oh, it does deepen the shadings though. So that will help make the shadings a little bit more blue tone. Um, they were really purple, so. All right, turning this on.
was like a terrible nightmare. All right, I'm glad I put that note about fluo blue in there because um, I would have totally forgotten about it, but it's completely changed the shading of that primary purple to that dark blue that I really wanted for uh, Chun-Li's outfit. So let me take a quick look at this. A lot darker. Um, I'm gonna look at it under my regular light and not this kind of like red booth light over here. So you'll still hear me, I'm just kind of shifting my laptop so I can look at this piece under my regular light that I use for looking at color. very very close to the color that um, I want but still missing a little bit let me do a few droppers eye droppers on my colors just to look yeah it's really missing this just dark blue shading which I think I can get with clear black I will have to check on that spoon. Let me see her top. Yeah, the top is pretty good. Um, I like how that top is shaded. I like how it turned into kind of this blue. Uh, so let's do an experiment and test some clear black on the spoon. And if I like it, then I will continue on it. But as it stands this kit um color is pretty nice already so i do like the blue shade that it ended up and once it's metallic um i guess glossed and stay metallic it'll be you know it'll have a natural uh shade and shadows to it that will reflect off of that metallic color so a lot of times when you're painting metallic color you don't really need to do a ton of shading anyway because depending on your uh, photo shoot or your light source, you're, you're gonna be casting shadows because the piece is glossy and um, hopefully has you know some sort of curvature or contour to it. That's why gloss is so, uh, gloss bodysuits and metallic bodysuits are so appealing because they uh, form along the curves of the body and so you're really just getting like shadows from that. But shading always helps, so it will bring out those that definition a little bit more even so these days I try to shade pretty much everything unless it's like a piece that's literally too small to shade okay 
So we're gonna just put a little bit of clear black on a spoon or two and see how that goes. I will not be using opaque colors on this anymore because we really don't want to be covering up the metallic with a different, you know, um, you know, full bodied color. Opaque color literally means you can't see through it. It's not transparent. So we don't want to be putting that type of color on the metallic or else we're not gonna be able to see the metallic. So we have to um, adjust by doing things like clear colors or different shadings. It really does not show up that well on the camera, but from far away, I can already see that darker blue shading. So I think it's something that will really only show up um, under the right lighting conditions in a photo shoot, but that's fine. Okay, uh, where did it go? I'm just gonna use one dropper of black here. I don't know if I'll use all of it, but always put it back since we're not really um, adjusting the color in any way okay so yeah clear black is not truly black it's not an opaque um, it's just more of a smoky darker color um, but it does layer on top of blues pretty well so you can use that um, another very popular method of shading blue is by putting red underneath it or maybe it was the other way oh, I think it was the other way um, putting blue underneath red and you'll get kind of a, a pretty deep shading. So if you want to do pre-shading, that's something you can do. Um, start out with a red, you know, base in your areas and then after that apply a blue top coat. Or maybe it was the other way. <laughs> Experiment. Uh, it's too late for me. I had a very long day. I woke up at 5.30 this morning, so I'm not right in the head right now. <laughs> It was blue and then red on top. I'm pretty sure. Now I can't remember. Maybe I should just do it now on stream and then we'll figure it out. <laughs> but whatever, we don't got time for that. Okay. Putting this black in the cup and I'm just gonna try the black on the spoon. If I like the shading, I might switch to the badger because that way we can get some more um, intense and localized shades. Hello, Canon. Yeah, I am uh, all over the place today, but we're still in good spirits, even though I am. It was also very hot today, so I'm like walking and I wore these boots because I was like, I'm gonna look fancy and great. And then I did a lot of walking and so now my feet are sore too. Back to school, y'all. Okay. Uh, not going to put on the airbrush boot yet. I'm just gonna spray this spoon real quick. See how that looks. The clear black, you kinda gotta go over it a few times for it to really make any difference. It's a very thin color. At least the guy in this one is. Oh, sorry. Not even spraying on the front of you guys. Looks pretty good. You can see this natural curvature here. I think it's focusing on. So yeah, see those shadings on the side of the spoon? And then the middle is kind of whatever, but just a little bit really gives it more of a look. But not sure if that's just how it is or what. I think, and clear black is one of those colors that layers really well on top of other like color shades that you put down. And so it will really deepen those blues, but if it's put directly onto um, the base, it will just uh, kind of make this cyan color. Sorry, it's really not focusing. Get this focused. So yeah, you can see the blue here has really been accentuated by the clear black, but just putting clear black on the bottom here, um, you get kind of this like cyan-y color. So it, I think it will work. Let me take a look at it next to the kit. Let's see, it looks like pearl blue. 
similar but not exactly um, right now we are shading and kind of working with mr. metallic blue so this is or mr. color blue sorry it's not well mr. color has metallic blues and then they have a mr. metallic line which is separate but this is just mr. color 76 so a plain old metallic blue but we've done some uh, shading on this spoon and just kind of in general throughout the night tonight so Right now we're applying clear black and I'm gonna check it against the current shadings of this kit. If I like it, then I will do it for the rest. Let me check over here too. Hmm. Yeah, I think I will do uh, just a light coat in a couple of spots. So in the shaded spots and that should be enough shading for tonight and for this kit. So let me convert my airbrush over to the badger. Shut it off, I'll clean this later. Switch back to the badger so tar. So we'll run a little bit past 10 tonight just because uh, we wanna make sure we get these shadings locked down. But unfortunately we did not have time for hair, which is actually pretty good because then we'll have more time to mask and focus on hair on Thursday. We're not really in any position where um, there's a wait period anymore because we already sprayed the face glossy. So we'll just jump right into that on a Thursday. All right, so just gonna do a bit more shading work, really bring out some of those crevices and the folds and the tattered clothes and along her top as well. Just putting my mask on. And let's see, put this here. And this, and this. All right, gonna be shutting off my uh, sound in just a moment.
look, y'all. Gonna check this one more time, but I think that the clear black worked really well in bringing out uh, those darker blue tones. So thankfully, because we did put on the clear or the primary violet first and then applied the fluo blue, uh, we ended up with a darker blue initially. And so when we put that clear black on after that, it just darkened the clear like blue, if that makes sense. So if we had not done any of that shading with the purple and you know the fluo color, if we had just applied a clear black directly to this base um, color, then yeah, we wouldn't have gotten the color that we ended up with. Let's see. Uh, so in order of what I did, Stu, and hello, <laughs> catching the end here. Um, we applied Mr. Color 76 first. So this is uh, a base color. This is metallic blue. After that, I went in with Gaia Notes 037. This is primary color violet. So it's a, a darker violet and a more, it's a more pigmented version. Not clear, but kind of clear, like it comes out clear. This is clear purple. It's hard to explain. So <laughs> clear purple is a little bit uh, less crazy. This is a very deep violet um, that we put on. And then after that, we applied a fluo blue on top of pretty much everything as well as the uh, primary color violet. And then finally went over all of that shadings uh, again with a clear black. And so uh, this is the result of it. You can see now, if you look at it, it has some very clear definition where it did not before. So uh, it will be interesting for me to check this VOD and kind of see how this figure progresses because to me, it, like in that lighting condition, I can see the shadings, uh, but starting out, you know, it was like, what am I even doing? <laughs> Here's another, you can see it kind of right here. And we haven't top coated this yet. So hopefully when we put the top coat on, it'll be, you know, a little bit uh, more vibrant. But this is very much a color that shows up under specific lighting. But you can see that it's a little bit darker on the edges here, especially when we kind of tilt it. You can start to see those purple blue tones. Yeah, no worries, Sue. <laughs> as long as you can catch us at any point, I'm happy. So it's all good. Here's a really good angle as well. You can see that this is not, um, well, to some extent, it's shadows cast by the lighting but there was quite a bit of shading inside of this uh, as well, this part here. And this piece has quite a bit of like folds and stuff going on. So I think there's some of them I even missed here. Like I would have liked to deepen it a little bit more back here, but to some extent it's like, what do you do? <laughs> and the shirt is pretty good as well. So maybe it's a little bit more noticeable with the shirt. You can really see it here, especially see if it will focus kind of hard really along the base here you can see this is a darker color than the top and kind of her breast area there's another angle of it so really like shading is something that when done well it will show up very vibrantly under certain lighting conditions you know but you don't like at least for me I don't like it to be too crazy and in your face uh, so you know to some extent that's something I'm working on as well is there's a line between like it getting, you know, visible <laughs> and then like all the detail being lost. And so um, there's various things you can do when you airbrush shade. This one too, I'm just looking at it under the camera right now, honestly. Looks pretty good. Let's see, your seal, oh, Canon, your seal model order shipped finally, four months, Jesus. Oh my God. Would it upset you if I told you I placed an order through airmail and it shipped out in like two weeks? <laughs> I haven't gotten it yet, but it did ship. So, uh, I don't know. They're working through it. Steel Model's weird. They're one of those companies that like they either respond, I think they respond really quickly to airmail requests, but when it comes to surface, because they have to schedule all of it, um, and going by boat, it takes a long time. Yeah, Canon should be painting. I look forward to the day when I see something painted by Canon. Admiring this. And we're gonna put this next to the other painted piece, her pants, since those are very important as well and part of this. 
pretty nice. A good contrast here. I think that the pants have quite heavy shading on them. This is a little bit heavier than I normally go, but I really wanted to get some, you know, crazy definition on these. And when placed next to this, it does look pretty good. It is a bit bright. I think though that when we put that white ribbon on there, that will help a little. So let me uh, put the white ribbon on and see if that makes it look a little more cohesive. Oh, also somehow my camera kind of like, or my uh, mic fell over. There we go. Let me grab that ribbon. So the ribbon was finished a while ago, but that will let us see how it looks with the green shading. So the two colors together, green shadings and you know, kind of this nice blue. <laughs> yeah, Stu, me too. <laughs> I'm running low on this primary color violet here and the purples and kind of everything. Uh, they sell out pretty quickly and they don't get like restock a lot so um, really just if you see it for sale you gotta buy it while you can. That's kind of the consensus I've come to for this. Other colors not so much. I've been trying to experiment with some other brands and other varieties um, so I'm not you know locked into only using one brand because there are plenty of nice other brands available. I might uh, purchase a purple from Dispay. I think it's, I keep maybe pronouncing it wrong. Dispay, Dispaya. Let me look it up real quick. Dispi. I think they make a purple one and I, I may have showed them off before or maybe not, but it's a Chinese brand of paint, I think, that I bought three bottles of just to test it and I really like how it came out. It's very vibrant. The bottle's super full. So let me see if they have a purple. It looks like they only have like metallic purples, which is not really something so much that I'm looking for. Let's see if they have cyclical purple. Violet Chameleon. I think that's the closest they have. Yeah, it's pronounced Dispay or Dispi. I'll put it in chat because it's a little hard to say normally. But this is a brand that's now available on new type and it's being kind of imported into the US. So I can only speak for US, um, but it's a uh, relatively newer, I guess, on an international sphere. Um, and so I gave it a try and I really liked it. And something that is interesting, which I will post as well, is the Dispay Magnetic Paint Mixer. So this is an interesting product that I saw on Japanese Twitter actually. And it's an alternative way to mix your paints. So rather than using uh, just a little Mr. Hobby, you know, stick, you have a, a little metal ball or something and it's basically like in science, you know, where you're gonna like stir paint with a beaker um, by inserting, you know, a little magnetic uh, rod. It, it's the same concept. It just mixes your paint. This is a very powerful mix that this guy has going on that video. But yeah, I saw it on Japanese Twitter and I thought, oh, that's interesting. And it's literally what we do to keep water like moving in the laboratory and stuff. So I'm kind of surprised that this hasn't been used before in terms of like paint. Um, in any case, uh, we're gonna wrap up here. Um, we did pretty good job this time. We got all the blues painted. So next time, well, you guys won't see it, but I'll take the uh, paint off of this and taco everything, or sorry, take the uh, tape off of this, not the paint and get that going. And next time will be hair, all hair. So she's got a lot of hair. We will have to be doing masking on it. Again, this is the face. So it's got all these little detail we'll have to mask off, but that's pretty much all that's left for this kit other than painting the face. So, and the gold details. So we're rapidly approaching the end here. 
Um, the hair will probably take a little bit of time, not only because of masking, but because it will require, you know, quite a bit of work. It's a, we got some curly cues here and I want to make sure they're all shaded and super, you know, gradiented and all of that. So it, that will be interesting. We'll see what happens um, and whether we end up with the color we want or something else. <laughs> so thank you so much for tuning in. Next stream will be on Thursday. So Thursday the 26th, same time, 8 p.m. EST. And I hope to see you guys all there. Hope you have a good rest of your night and continuing week and talk to you later. Bye-bye.